This film is intended for eye surgeons for training and education purposes. Viewer discretion is strongly recommended. Hello friends. This is a 75-year-old patient who has this very dense black cataract and is scheduled for fecal emulsification. So let's understand what is the big deal about managing these dense black cataracts. There are multiple challenges. To begin with, the visibility will not be great. Dividing the nucleus is quite difficult. While dividing the nucleus, we can have intraoperative complications, especially related to the capsular zonal apparatus. We may have post-capsular tear, zonal adhesions, rexus tear off, etc. Corneal endothelial trauma and post-op corneal edema is one of the more common complications. And finally, wound burn is a major issue which we need to be concerned of. And also there is a belief that excessive amount of echo energy consumed during the surgery is going to cause endothelial damage. Does it really? Let's find out. Now these are the biometric readings. Point to note here is the chamber is quite deep which is advantageous in this case. So I begin by injecting 0.5 ml of lignocaine in the subtenant space just to keep the patient a little comfortable as I expect the surgery to take a little longer time. The side port incisions are created, the capsule is stained and I am using dispersive OVD to deepen the chamber. The rexus is being performed with the forceps. A point about rexus to note. In these hard nucleus, it's important to have a larger rexus as it makes the manipulation of the nuclear fragments easier and also less stressful in the capsular bag. Of late, I have been preferring to perform this oval rexus wherein the diameter of the rexus in the meridian of the incision is more than the meridian right angle to it. So this oval rexus, I learned it from Dr. Kiranjit Singh from Amritsar, India. I find that this oval rexus helps to create a longer trench which indirectly helps in easier division of the nucleus and as we all know, nuclear division is probably the most difficult part in such cataracts. A gentle hydrodissection is performed, following by decompression at multiple quadrants. The nucleus is rotated, now is the time to FACO. Now please take a moment to note the energy consumed now, it's zero obviously. And let us see how much energy is consumed by the end of the procedure. Initially, I just aspirate a little bit of superficial cortex just to get the flow moving before starting the sculpting process. The plan is to use the classical four quadrant divide and conquer technique. And of course, I'll be using the torsional ultrasound in this case. I begin the sculpting using continuous torsional energy in linear mode. I increase my energy settings to 100% as I realize that the 90% was not good enough. The nucleus is stabilized with my chopper and the groove is widened so that there is no obstruction to the phaco sleeve as the deeper trenching is begun. Please note that I am using 100% energy during sculpting but still it does not seem to be enough. The nucleus is still being pushed mechanically in spite of it being stabilized and also using the maximum amount of energy which is available. Of course, the nucleus is black rock or a granite. So once I've reached about 70 to 75 percent depth, the nucleus is rotated 90 degrees and a similar trench is begun. Again, the same principles are utilized. Stabilize the nucleus, make a wider trench initially and then go deeper. The nucleus is rotated 90 degrees and now I come back to our original trench. Now it is being lengthened and deepened. The goal is to deepen the trenches to about 90% depth. Please note my assistant is always pouring BSS on the incision to prevent any wound burns. And now finally the last trench is being done. It's time to deepen the trenches and it's very critical to have at least 90% depth since dividing the nucleus is going to be quite difficult in this cataract. The most important aspect while managing these hard cataracts with the four quadrant technique is to have very good visualization uh, with stereopsis and assessing the right depth is extremely critical. Having good focus and magnification helps us a lot. Once I feel that the trench is deep enough, I need to laterally separate these four quadrants by cracking the posterior plate. 
Now I'm switching to the chop mode. Under high vacuum, used with only a short burst of longitudinal phaco energy, I bury the tip inside the lateral wall of one quadrant and then perform lateral separation using the second instrument. Luckily, the first fragment separates quite easily. The nucleus is rotated again and the lateral separation is begun. Now in this fragment, it's quite tough. The trench was probably not deep enough. I go back to refill the antechamber and bag with OBD. Dispersive OBD below the cornea and HPMC within the bag. I occlude the fragment with the tip, lift it up a little bit and then the chopper is placed at progressively deeper planes to perform the lateral separation a few times. Well, it was really tough. Finally, the fragments were separated. But at this point, this one fragment has become free and has escaped out of the bag into the antechamber. The problem is it's quite close to the cornea now. But luckily, as we recollect, the chamber was deep in this patient and that is going to be beneficial. I switch my settings to the quadrant removal mode. I'll be using continuous torsional energy to emulsify this fragment. Please note the position of the bevel. It is turned sideways and facing the fragment so that the maximum amount of tip is exposed to the fragment. The second instrument is just held above the fragment, acting like a guard and preventing any part of the fragment flying around. The fragment was consumed eventually. OVD is reinstalled, the first dispersive followed by HPMC underneath it. This quadrant is again consumed in the pupillary plane in a very controlled manner. At the end of emulsifying each quadrant, I make it a point to go back and refill the OVD. The last two fragments are not totally separated from each other. The lens fibers which are holding them together needs to be taken care of. And that is the area where I'm trying to phaco. Once the fibers are eaten off, the two fragments are then separated and each of the fragments are then taken care one by one. Again, the most important criteria for me is to ensure that there's no lens chatter and turbulence at this stage. I'm trying to minimize the turbulence and chatter by controlling the energy delivery by foot pedal so that we can have uh, the emulsification process done in a very controlled manner at the level of the pupillary plane. Finally, it was done. Well, at the end, I can feel that it was not very difficult, barring the part where the separation of the two fragments was really difficult. At this point, please note the CDE energy consumed. This is almost 10 to 15 times more compared to an average cataract which I do. Time to remove the cortex. It is done. The lens is implanted into the bag. The ovary is removed, the incisions are hydrated and that's it. Now it's time for the results. It's heartening to see corneas like this in the first post-op day, even with a black cataract. Let's go ahead and look at the wound as well. The wound does look healthy, there's no gape and there's no evidence of any burn. To summarize, with this case, we can learn that if you're able to minimize lens chatter and turbulence, then a clear cornea on the first post-op day is very much possible even in the hardest of cataracts. Higher amount of phaco energy used during surgery is not directly proportional to endothelial damage, but more importantly, at what plane and how far away from cornea was this energy delivered is going to decide the amount of endothelial damage. Of course, the torsional ultrasound helps in mitigating the issue of wound burn significantly, which is a real concern while we are using traditional longitudinal ultrasound. To conclude, the traditional old-fashioned four-quadrant technique, along with the torsional ultrasound, works wonders while managing these ultra-hard cataracts. Thank you for watching and hope you found this helpful.